कांचन गौरंगी श्री राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणामी हरि प्रे वांछा कल्पतरु वश्या कृपा सिंधु व्यायुष्य पदिता नाम पावने भ्यो वैष्णवे भ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत राधा शिवा साधि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे इति शोध शक नाम नाम कलिकर्मो शतारनो नत्परत रोपाया सर्व वेदेशु दृष्टि नाम चिंतामणि कृष्णाशी चेतन्यर सविग्रहा नित्य शुद्ध नित्य मुक्त अभिनत्व नाम नाम इनाम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा इसे इस इन भजना वाले के जाबे के जाबे भाई भव सिंधु पार के जाबे के जाबे भाई भव सिंधु पार धन्य कली Who wants to cross this ocean of this material world? Who wants to go back to Krishna? Dhanya Kali Yuge Shri Chaitanya Avatar In this age of Kali Yuga He says in Srimad Bhagavatam Kalor Doshe Nidhi Rajan Astir Ek Mahan Guna Kirtanya Krishna Shya Mukta Sangh Param Raje Only by surrendering to the feet of Lord Krishna we can go back to him. There is no other way. There is no other way. If you want to surrender to Maya, because you have to surrender to somebody. You go to your office to whom you surrender. You basically work under your boss. Whatever instructions he gives, you follow them. And if you don't follow what happens, that's the door you go out. So you got you have to surrender either to Maya or you have to surrender to the Lord Krishna, the Supreme Lord. But if you surrender to Maya, what will happen is that you'll be hit. You'll be hit every time, and you'll get a little pleasure, then again hit, then again a little pleasure, till you will get tired of it. Once you get completely tired of it, and then you say, there is no other way, I'm so tired of it, as you say most of the time, I'm feeling so boring doing this work all the time, I'm so tired of it, I want to do something new. But in this case is that Maya will hit you so hard that you will give up everything and you have no other doors to go. The only door left open is for the Lord Krishna you have to come to. But the question comes is, how many of us we really believe in Krishna? That's the most important thing we really have to understand. It. He's just coming to the temple on Sunday. He's doing an arti at home for one hour, one hour in the evening. Is that sufficient for the Lord? Lord doesn't need anything from us. He is Atma Ram. What we are doing is for ourselves. To 
get his mercy. So there was a saintly person and he was keeping a mourn breath that he will not speak. And one day when he was passing through one village and it became dark and he decided to stay there and the people of that village were quite religious. They used to follow dharma and wanted to do some bhakti. So when they came to know that a saintly person has come in this village, they all approached to him that please speak about the Lord. Please speak to us about the Lord. But that sannyasi was keeping a mourn that he will not speak anything. So he said that I am keeping a mourn breath. He explained it to him by actions. But the villagers were still adamant because the devotees of the Lord really want the mercy of the pure devotees of the Lord. So by the request of the villagers, because seeing their devotion, the saintly person said, okay, tomorrow you all gather at one place like you people have gathered here all together. And he said, I will ask you only one question, which I may probably be asking you. You don't have to answer it. I don't want to interrogate anybody. Just feel relaxed and enjoy it. He said, I will ask you only one question. If you answer that correctly, I'll proceed further to speak about the Lord. So the villagers were very happy. They all gathered at one place. And this sannyasi comes here, the pure duty of the Lord. And he opens his mourn breath. He starts speaking just because of them to speak about the Lord. So when they all were set up, he asked the question, Do you believe in God? Whoever believes in God, please raise your hands. So all the villagers raised their hands that we believe in God. So the sannyasi said, since you believe in God, there is no point for me to speak about the Lord because you already know about the Lord. And he left away. The religious became very disappointed. <laughs> so we wanted to hear about the Lord, but here he comes and says, oh, we believe in God. So, he... so they approached him again. And this time villagers decided that if he asked the same question, you know what we have to answer? <laughs> so they went back and they requested a humble request to that <coughs> saintly person and said, please, please give us one more chance. So that Mahatma said, okay, tomorrow again we will assemble to the same place and I will come there and I will ask the same question again. And this time when Mahatma comes and he asks the same question, how many of you believe in God? And this time nobody raised their hands. And the sannyasi said, since you don't believe in God, there is no point in speaking to God. <laughs> so he left again. So the villagers were again very much disappointed. But the devotee of the Lord, you know, that is one of the qualities of the pure devotee. He never gives up till the last chance, you know. He never gives up. The story, if you can hear, the lifetime of Bhakti Siddhanta Siddhartha, you will know that how the pure devotees are. Here. So they came again to the sannyasi and says, please give us the last chance, please. They requested again. And all the villagers, they didn't know what to say. So this sannyasi again agreed, said, okay, no problem, I'll come again. So they all gathered again at one place. And this Mahatma comes there and he asked the same question. He asked that, how many of you believe in God? Then half of them raised their hands and half of them didn't raise their hands. So, he says, the one who believes in God, who raised their hands, please come on my right hand side. And the one who does not believe in God comes on the left hand side. So they change their positions. And the sannyasi said, you believe in God, so you tell them about the God. And the sannyasi then said, <laughs> So what exactly that means is that how many of us 
we really believe in God. What exactly the meaning of believing in God is. See, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita in 15th chapter that Yoma Meva Samam Murho Janati Purushottamam. In 15th chapter he says, Yo ma me va samam mudho janati purushottamam. Yo, the one who, ma me eva, the only me, janati, who knows purushottamam. I am the Param Parmeshwar, purushottamam. But in the second line he says that what he does, you understand that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. We understand that the Lord Ram, Hari is the Supreme Lord. But does that mean that you are God in Bhakti? No. You see, it is like this. Bhakti, if you have a knowledge, and if you don't implement that knowledge in your life or in, in your daily life, it is like, they say, Sanyasi says, it's like that you have a bank account, you have a checkbook of 50 pages, but there is nothing in the account. So what is the use of that checkbook when you don't have anything in your account? So bhakti does not mean that you just have a knowledge itself. He says, in Mandokya Upanishad it comes as Tat Vikyanartham Sa Abhi Sam Guru Abhikache and it says Samit Prani Shotriyam Brahmanistham the one who has jnan and then who has a vijnan, both of them. And the 18th chapter also Krishna says very clear. Clearly, what are the qualities of a Brahman? 18th chapter, Krishna says, Shamo damastapasocham shantir archa mevache jnana vijnana asityam brahma karma sapavajam. And those who jnana vijnana, both of them has to be there if you really want to develop love for Krishna. So the Krishna says in the 15th chapter, Yo ma meva samam mudo janati purushottamam sa sarva vid bhajte maam sarva bhavena bhata. Once he understands that Krishna is the Supreme Lord, sa sarva vid bhajte maam, after that he only does everything for the Lord, nothing else for himself. Bhakti is not cheap, keep in your writing, in your book, all the time in your mind. Religion is not a joke, bhakti is not cheap. These are the two things, if you can always remember all the time, you will start progressing in bhakti, I can guarantee you. Make sure that religion is not a joke. What is the true religion? It is described in Srimad Bhagavatam very clearly, in the second canto itself. Sayem Pumsa Paro Dharma Yado Patira Dokshate. Ahatuki Pratihata Su Prashatma Prasidhati. Ahatuki Pratihat. It should be unmotivated and it should be uninterrupted. It's not that you have done five, ten minutes or one hour at home very nicely, basling Aati and everything is done it, and after that you go to the work. And then you are so busy on the karmas, and those karmas will not let you go back to the Lord. I tell you very clearly, Krishna says this. If you want to go back to the Lord, your book has to be clean. There should not be even a single karma left. If you have one single karma, you have to come back to this earth again. So what is the most important thing for us is to understand what the bhakti is. So if you really want to do bhakti in your life, the most important thing for us is to do is chant the name of the Lord Hari all the time. 
See, Krishna says very clearly, man manava man bhakto madhyaji mama namaskuru. This particular line in Bhagavad Gita has been told twice. This is the only particular line Krishna has said twice. Surrender to me, bow down to me only. There is a reason for that. Krishna is emphasizing to Arjuna, through Arjuna to all of us, that we must make sure that we should understand the Lord properly. And then we should pray to the Lord properly. If we don't do it, then the Maya is so powerful it will take over and it will beat you like anything. And what is Maya is, you know, if I give you a reference from the scriptures for Ram Charit Manas, Jo Maya Sab Jagahi Nachava Jasu Charitra Likha Nahi Pava So Prabhu Pru Bilas Khag Raja Nach Nati Iva Samet Samaja Tulsi Das Ji is describing what is Maya. Jo Maya Sab Jagahi Nachava That this material energy of the Lord is making us dance all the time in this material world and the character of that material energy of the Lord nobody can understand it but he said so Prabhu Bhru Vilas Raja Bhru is the eyebrows that material energy that Devi Ma to whom you people call is the material energy through which the Krishna and Ram they create this whole universe. This material world is created through the Devima. And that he says is dancing. So Prabhu Vilas Khadraja is dancing on the eyebrows of the Lord. Not only one Devima, he says, Nati if Samet Samaja with whole family of that. The whole family of material energy. It's a very deep to understand it, but we can discuss about the material energy of the Lord sometimes when we get a chance. But that is how the material energy is. And in Srimad Bhagavatam it comes, the material energy, how it works is you know that there was a line, and because he thinks that he is the most powerful in the general, he was going. And he saw one rabbit and he kicked that rabbit up and down and then he asked him, tell me who is the king of this jungle? Because that rabbit is so small, what he will say? He said, no, you are the, you are the king, you are the king, sir. So lion was very happy. So lion went further, he saw one deer again and he also started kicking that deer and he asked same question that who is the king of this jungle? And the deer says, only you, only you are the king of this jungle. But after that, lion was so proud, he became full of arrogance. Then he found an elephant. He went at the back of the elephant and he kicked the elephant. And the elephant thought that there is a hand, you know, which is scratching his leg, you know. But when the elephant looked behind and he saw that lion, and the elephant got so angry and he rolled him in his tusk and, his, uh, and threw him up and down and put his tusk also in his stomach and he grabbed him like and threw him four or five times until the lion became totally unconscious and could not even get up and so much hurting, you know. But after some time, the lion when came out in the consciousness and he goes back to the elephant again and you know what he says? It's okay, you don't know who is the king of the jungle, that is okay, that is different thing. 
But you know that is me who is the king of the jungle. If you don't know, that's okay, no problem. So he's telling to the elephant, no problem, you have hit me so hard. If you don't know the answer, it's okay, no problem. So that is Maya. The Maya is kicking us every second, every moment to us. And the only shelter can be to protect it from this particular Maya is surrendering to the Supreme Lord. How you surrender, it is up to you. How you surrender to the Lord, it is up to you. Now the Bhakti says so many. Sharanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pala, Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasanam, Sakyam, Atma, Nivedanam. And Lord Ram says, in Ram Charit Manas also, is that particular portion in Ram Charit Manas, Tulsi Das Ji has just written it, but the Lord Ram has spoken to Shabri. Pratama Bhagati Santan Kar Sangha Dusari Rati Mama Katha Prasangha Pratama Bhagati Santan Kar Sangha you must have association of the pure devotees of the Lord. If you don't have association of the pure devotee of the Lord, how you will know about the Lord? That is the most important thing. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita also very clearly why we should have association of the pure devotee. Tad vidhi pranipate na pari prashnena sevya. Why you should surrender to the bona fide spiritual master? Why you should have association of the pure devotee is because by surrendering to him and if you can ask all about your doubts and those will be cleared and then he will make you stand in front of Krishna and he will open the door for that Krishna's kingdom and you can just go into that and that is the job of the spiritual master but the question comes is who is a pure devotee who is a genuine guru because in this world there's so many gurus you can ask any type of gurus any type of guru you want is available gali gali mein avatar hai gali gali mein bhagwan he can go and see it. I was uh, in Bombay one time. I was, I was traveling, and when after the preaching, we and we said in the preaching very clearly that bhukti mukti spraha. If you hear from a person who is in the mode of passion or mode of ignorance, and he is speaking only because he has got a knowledge. He has read from the books. Then the same qualities will come into you too. That's a very important thing. If you listen from a pure devotee, you'll get the qualities of a pure devotee. If you listen from a person who is interested in bhukti, who is interested in some material desires, so preaching to you, and in return, he wants something materially. Because the Guru has left everything. He has left Tana, Mana, Dhana. He has left all these three Tana, Mana, Dhana, he has dedicated to the Lord Krishna. He has left his house, he has left his family, he has left all his bank balance. He left everything. Why? Because the scripture says they are poison to progress in spiritual life. How come a guru who has given up all this poison and sits on Vyas Asana and preaches you something that you get this poison again? You have to give up these poisons. If you cannot give up this poison, this poison is just like a maya. You get bewildered, and then once you get bewildered, then the, everything gets scattered. 
So the bhakti is where you have to concentrate is you have to have an association of the pure devotees of the Lord. And who is the pure devotee of the Lord? We can discuss it if you given a chance to discuss that who is a genuine guru, who is a fake guru, what are the qualities of the guru, what are the disqualifications of the guru as per the scriptures. We must understand it. Who can be guru, who cannot be a guru? These are the things we have to understand, not from our knowledge, from the scriptures what it says. That's what we have to understand. But we still need a guru in our life in order to achieve the prema, love for Krishna. Because Krishna made it very clearly. That Krishna, when he comes and he is going to the Sandeepni Muni's ashram and treating him as his guru and learning from him, so he is teaching us, he is giving us a message that you have to have a guru in order to progress in your spiritual life. When Lord Ram came, he went to the ashram too. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, he also surrendered to the guru. Ishwar Puri. He also surrendered to the guru. But how come, when we come to this particular life, that when you ask to the people, no, I am already highly waiting. I am a highly elevated person. I don't need Guru. I know everything. I also pray to Krishna. But Krishna, what it says? Krishna says, the person who thinks that he is my devotee is not my devotee. Ye me bhaktya janati. The one who thinks that he is my devotee is not my devotee. The one who is a devotee of my devotee, he is my devotee. That's what the message of scriptures is. That's what the message of Bhagavad Gita is. That's why you have to have a spiritual master who can take you to Krishna. But you must understand what are the qualities of the spiritual masters have. What type of means is uh, like his uh, instructions are powerful. Because the spiritual master's instructions itself is so powerful. And then what happens is, you have an association of the spiritual master, what he does? In Bhaj Govindam, Adi Shankaracharya writes it, Satsang gatve nishtang gatvam nishtang gatve nirmo hattvam nirmo hattvam nishtal tattvam nishtal tattvam jivan mukti. That's a process it happens. When you attain the satsang, when you attain the satsang means you have an association like we all are having association when we are discussing about the Supreme Law. What happens is all your doubts goes away. All your attachment goes away. Your mind, your, your mind which is running away from this place which has been which is disturbing you all the time, will be concentrating at the feet of the Lord and it will take you to the path of the Jivan Mukti. But Jivan Mukti is not the destination. Let me make it very clear to every one of you. Moksha is not the main goal of the life in the spiritual life, basically. Moksha is a platform where you, if you don't do the Hari Bhakti, you will fall down again. That is a guarantee. We have sannyasis in Bharat. They used to claim that they go to the Himalayas and do the tapasya and all those things. They have got the moksha. Today they are in jail. Because they have not done the Bhakti properly. Bhakti is not so cheap. As I told you, Bhakti is not cheap. Ye to prem ki baat hai udha Bandagi tere bas ki nahi hai Yaha sarde ke hote hai saade 
आशिकी इतनी सस्ती नहीं है ये तो प्रेम की बात है उधो उधो को बता रहे हैं ये तो प्रेम की बात है See, there are two steps in the spiritual life. One, you should have the correct knowledge. Once you have the correct knowledge, then you start developing love for the Lord. And Bhagavad Gita basically gives you that particular knowledge. And after that, you don't need any knowledge whatsoever it is. You don't need any knowledge. And Krishna said to Arjuna very clearly, you don't need any other knowledge apart from that. But after that knowledge, you have to have association of the pure devotees. And that comes into Srimad Bhagavatam. Then you start understanding the Srimad Bhagavatam. will tell you that how the devotees of the Lord, even though they were king, even though they were king, at the end, they went back to the Lord. They lived their life as a king, as a grasta, but interiorly, inside, within their mind, they were hundred percent all the time. They were with Krishna. All the time they were with Krishna. So if you want to become a pure devotee of the Lord, then only Krishna will accept you. Then Hari will accept you. Even a little this thing. Nirmal man jan so mohi pava mohi kapat chal chitra na bhava Lord Ram is saying, when Prabhuji was giving a class last night, he explained about it. Hanumanji asked it, to whom you love a lot, who is your most dear to you? Then Bhagavan Ram said, Nirmal manajan so mohi pava, mohi kapat chala chitra na bhava. Your heart, your heart should be so humble. What is humbleness? It's a very big topic to understand it. We can talk about it. But you have to be so humble. <clears throat> and humbleness is a one. But the most important thing is in the second line. Mohe kapat chala chitra na bhava. You don't become nirmal, doesn't matter. But at least stop the kapat and chal. You stop these two things. Nirmata will come automatically within you. I can guarantee you. That is bhakti. Because these vikaras are within us. These desires are within us. This enviousness is within us. Is not, in, not letting Krishna to come even near to us. But to tell you very frankly, there is nobody who is the most dear to you and who is the most near to you except Krishna. Your wife is sitting beside you two, three feet away, but Krishna is sitting here. And he is the most dear to you. He is sitting in the form of the soul here. From your to what time I can? Over 10 minutes. So, I'll try to explain you from both the scriptures. You know, one thing very clearly you should understand is that if you want to progress in bhakti, you must read and understand the scriptures which are meant for that particular time. Like if you are in sixth standard and if you start reading the books of the twelfth standard, you will never understand it. My friend, he's a doctor now, he's a very, very renowned doctor in Bharat. He told his own story when he was in 10th class and he was studying biology. And then the teacher said that there will be a test on this particular day from this particular 
topic. So his father also is a doctor. So he went and he went to the library and took out the book of the university standard. And he studied from there. And then he wrote it six sheets on that particular topic. And when he received the result of that, he saw that all others have got marks more than him. So he took the, ta the, the sheet of the other students and went to the teacher and said, Look, they have returned it from this 10th standard book and I have returned it from the university book. How come you have given me less mark? You know what the teacher said? Yes, you have written it, but I could not understand <laughs> So if you are in 6th standard, you must read the books of the 6th standard only. If you try to read the books of Vedas in this age of Kali Yuga, where Krishna says, in this age of Kali Yuga, only the chanting the name of the Lord is only applicable. And the recommended scriptures is Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Ramayana, Ramcharit Manas. And there is only one Upanishad, is called Kali Santran Upanishad, which we should read. You can consult other ones, but Vedas and you can never understand in this age of Kali. So if you really want to become a devotee of the Lord, you have to cultivate your own life in such a way that you become the most dear to the Lord. As I said, there is no scarcity of the spiritual masters in this whole universe. Somebody asked this question, how I can get a bona fide spiritual master? So the one sannyasi gave a very good answer which I like to share with all of you. He said, there is no shortage of the spiritual master in this whole world. There is a shortage of the pure disciples in this world. If you become a pure disciple of the Lord, there will be a line of the spiritual masters. There will be a line of the spiritual masters to give you the shelter and take you to Krishna in this age of Kalita. So cultivate yourself first. Sitting on the spiritual platform, any desire is only for Krishna, not for yourself. Name, fame, positions will let you down. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but one day it is going to come. Krishna is going to give you a very good lesson to all of us.